Hi there, can you tell me who you are? Yes, I'm Helen Henderson. I'm the Atlantic Coast Program Mar Manager with the American Literal Society, and I also run our Barnegat Bay projects. Great. Helen, you were testifying today before the Joint Environmental Committees, Assembly and Senate of the New Jersey State Legislature, and we're in Lavalette today. Uh, they were taking testimony about uh, a soil standard, soil compaction bill, a bill that was passed five years ago to take care of the problem of soil compaction, and uh, still has not been implemented. Um, and we've heard testimony from other folks about the reasons for that and what's going on. But your, uh, I'd like to ask you about the fact that one of the problems people say is it's too expensive or they don't know how to measure it and so on and so forth. But your uh, told the group today about a project that your group was involved in that had some very dramatic results. Can you tell us about that? Sure. Um, the American Literal Society was funded about three and a half years ago by the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection to reduce non-point source pollution or stormwater runoff and that is entering Barnegat Bay. Um, Governor Christie's 10-point plan really looked to address that as one of the major problems causing the ecological ecological degradation of the bay and um, therefore there were uh, grant opportunities for groups like ours to address that. Um, this project, one of the main partners on it, is the Ocean County Soil Conservation District and that is because without effective and healthy soils you cannot have proper stormwater management. So the project that I highlighted today is one of seven that the grant has helped to fund where we went into a highly compacted lawn area that was meant to function as a stormwater basin for a 220 unit, 22 acre private condominium complex known as Laurel Commons, mm -hmm. uh, which drains, drains to the Long Swamp Creek, which is a tributary of the Toms River, the largest freshwater tributary to Barnegat Bay. Um, we looked at this uh, basin area, which we had previously studied, done um, some soil compaction tests and found that um, beyond the obvious flooding conditions that the community was experiencing, um, we did find that the soils were so compacted that the grass basin area was actually functioning as if it were a paved parking lot. Um, we went in there. Today I, I brought this testimony forward and it, this project example to show that um, it is easy, it is cost effective, and um, very, very successful, uh, not only in terms of reducing pollution, but also reducing flooding problems. Um, for $60,000, we removed the top layer of compacted grass and soils. We dug down about 12 to 18 inches. Uh, we amended and restored the soils. We planted it with native grasses and plants. Um, we now have a highly functioning and successful bioretention basin that produces no discharge, no stormwater runoff have we been able to measure since implementing this about two years ago. Um, and the community's flooding problems have been dramatically reduced, um, if not altogether resolved. And we did all this for this one project that is about an acre, acre and one half in size for $60,000 from start to finish, including design, engineering, soil amendments, construction, and plantings. Wow. Um, so I was here today to make a compelling argument that soil restoration is um, one very important component of appropriate stormwater management in terms of both uh, pollutant removal uh, and also flooding reductions. You said that uh, before the project, uh, the area, the neighborhood there, actually during flood times, there were cars would be floating, right, uh, in, the, in the street. That's correct, yes. Um, unfortunately, there was no member of the community available to testify today, but had they been here, they would tell you about one particularly terrifying experience that a homeowner had, a woman with a young child in a car seat, hmm. was actually, there was a, a flash flood event uh, during one of those, you know, regular downpours that we have now um, along the coast, and um, she was stranded in a car with her infant child in a car seat. Wow. Uh, very, very terrifying, and as I said, within the almost two years since then, they have no longer experienced any of those dramatic and dangerous flooding events. Well, there certainly are plenty of municipalities in New Jersey where it may not be applicable everywhere, where where we have very serious flooding problems and where some projects like this might help alleviate that. Absolutely. I think that, um, you know, we like to call these projects, um, they're known as green infrastructure. Um, you're seeing cities 
like Camden and Philadelphia implementing all sorts of green infrastructure techniques to handle greater volumes of water quantity while providing better water quality at the same time. Um, we're creating green jobs. It's definitely the direction that the state of New Jersey um, you know, should be going in as well as, as others are, you know, leading by example. Um, and we find that, you know, at the end of it all, there, in terms of cost-benefit analysis and things like that, um, you know, protecting people, protecting our water quality, any of the investments or the money that it takes to actually implement these types of projects really comes back to us over and over again. All right, Helen Henderson, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for having me.